What's up guys? If you're new to the channel, a very warm welcome. My name is Dr. Munir Moyes and I'm a family medicine physician. In the UK, we're also called GPs. Digitized Health is your YouTube channel for everything you need to know about digital health technology. Today's review is all about the 11 inch iPad Pro Magic Keyboard. I've been using this keyboard now for about one month, and the more I used it, the more I realized people out there needed to know what this keyboard is all about from a health perspective. So health benefits, you say? Why would a keyboard offer any health benefits or hurt my health? Well, for the purposes of this review, we're not going to delve too far into the technical aspects of the keyboard. There are any number of amazing YouTubers out there who have already done that. But instead, look at three key areas from a health perspective and give the keyboard a rating out of five for each. So the first area is comfort. Things that are comfortable are more likely to be used and we would hypothesize less likely to cause harm. Number two, pro health. Does this device do anything to promote or protect your health? And number three, altruating. Does it do anything that may actually hurt? So let's start with comfort. The Magic Keyboard is a smooth operator. The keys feel buttery smooth to type on with quite a satisfying feedback with every press and an amount of typing pressure that you feel like you're almost typing on a, a newer MacBook, for example. Apple have done a great job, I think, in making the keyboard satisfying and responsive to type on. The keys are smaller than the MacBook Pro, but you can see that Apple have made every effort to maximize the real estate that they had to fill the space. Typing is always going to be a little bit more crowded on a smaller footprint keyboard, but actually the result is a better typing experience than you might expect or have ever really experienced on an iPad. The presence of a USB-C connection on the side is a real gift and the beautiful lit up keyboard that just adjusts automatically according to the ambient light is a real delight. The edges of the keyboard are a little bit firm, but the soft texture of the material helps protect it against scratching your skin when you're holding the device, for example, in your hands. And that brings me on to the weight. The keyboard weighs about 600 milligrams, which is about 1.3 pounds. And when you combine that with the weight of the iPad Pro 11 inch, second generation, it comes to just over one kilo in weight. And if there's any downside then to the comfort of the keyboard, it is the weight. The keyboard makes a slim iPad pretty bulky and you will know about the weight when putting it into a bag and carrying it. However, for the intent with which it was made, which is by and large to be planted onto a relatively flat surface, for the premium feel and the firmness and protection that comes with it, then this may be a forgivable flaw. The angle of inclination is limited to 130 degrees, which you should be able to see there. Why, Apple? Why? Why could this not go just a little bit further back? I mean, for 90% of the positions I was in when I was using it, it was sufficient. It really was. But the, you can imagine there are certain positions where you would love for it to be a little bit further back and you're not having to crane your neck to get a better view of the screen. So overall, this keyboard gets a 3.5 out of 5 for me for comfort. And really, it's only let down by the weight and that screen angle limit. By the way, guys, if you're getting value out of this video, I would love you to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as we are growing week on week. So next up is the health rating. Now, repetitive strain injury is a term commonly heard and often in reference to pain around a tendon from overusing it. It used to be considered an inflammatory condition mainly where the tendons would get swollen and injured as a result of being overused. And so the term tendonitis was common. However, we now realize after looking at tendons of patients with RSI under the microscope that actually there probably isn't as much inflammation present as we once thought. 
And what we see in RSI, repetitive strain injury, is scars forming in the tendons and a healing response by the body that isn't quite working. Although there are many potential causes for RSI, including genetics, what sex you are, ergonomics plays an important role in the development of many upper body RSI problems. Ergonomics means the design of products to fit the structure of the human body and allow for ease of use. I'm sure there's a more scientific definition of it, but for the purpose of this video, that's what I mean. Too much movement or awkward postures involving the hands and wrists or shoulders during daily or occupational activities can potentially strain tendons. So, I put the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard for my iPad Pro 11 inch to the test to see whether the design does anything to help prevent that. First thing to say is the Magic Keyboard has a degree of firmness to it that not many iPad keyboards have. In my opinion, tablet keyboards should be designed such that they can be used in your lab or otherwise it defeats the purposes of an ultra mobile device. So many other keyboards are flimsy or they're too flexible, which puts strain on your wrist due to the extra force you're having to apply when you're typing. And over prolonged periods, typing on bendy keyboards in your lab is just not possible unless you have Bruce Lee like Chris. Now, as I mentioned earlier as well, the recall on the keys is closer to that of the latest MacBook Pro than say compared to older generation iPad keyboards. Uh, again, this avoids excessive pressure being needed to be placed onto the keyboard. The new trackpad is so efficient and so well integrated into iOS, you almost don't want to use the screen with your finger for the time that you're using the keyboard. And this is a huge win for the Magic Keyboard from a health perspective, in my opinion. For all the virtues of tablet computers, one thing that is becoming increasingly difficult with the pro level tablets in particular is that the size can be a bit unwieldy and this can put undue strain on the wrists and elbows when typing and constant swiping with your fingers. And over time, this can, this can take its toll. Accounting for the excellent build quality of the keyboard that lures you into a happy balance of using the screen less, it may relieve the stress on your wrists that take place with holding tablets in your hands, or the stress on your fingers from typing on a non-tactile, limited mechanical feedback screen. The Apple Magic Keyboard, you get a four out of five for doing something that is potentially good for our health. Just a side note, let me know your thoughts in the comments below about whether tablet keyboards are your preferred means of typing or whether the screen is good enough. And finally, the OUCH rating. Here we're talking about whether there's anything about this particular keyboard that might actually potentially hurt you or uh, risk your health. So due to the size of the 11 inch, you do find that your fingers and hands are sometimes a bit cramped up but this is a criticism that could be leveled against any tablet keyboard this size. And as is the case with most typing experiences on keyboards that fit an 11 inch size, I would imagine that unless frequent breaks are taken, you will expose yourself to a risk of repetitive strain injury from typing. The small package can also encourage awkward positions to be adopted by the wrist. So sometimes going too far back or too far forward, your neck arching forward or arching too far back to get a better view of the screen. But again, this is not a unique criticism to the Apple keyboard and is a risk with most keyboards really of this variety. The additional weight of this keyboard is not unsubstantial and making transporting this a little less comfortable as well and potentially puts a bit more strain on the muscles carrying it. So overall rating in this category, here we'll say, just like the other categories, a lower score is worse. We'll give it a three out of five. It all depends on how you use this device. So our overall rating for this keyboard, four out of five. To my knowledge, the best keyboard you can get for the iPad Pro 11 inch, and I would imagine similar good things could prob probably be said for its bigger brother. I really hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on this keyboard. If you felt this video provided some value to you, we would love for you to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. And as always, what a pleasure it was to be with you today. 
and I cannot wait to see you at the next video.